Okay, welcome everybody. And thank you for joining us here today for an insightful uh, dialogue on uh, digital assets for wealth creation and hedging. Um, I'm sure we all have opinion on uh, in this space, but today we're gonna explore uh, the market landscape. What are those opportunities? Uh, and what are the collaboration areas that we can uh, all engage with in relation to this uh, area around the digital economy? We're gonna obviously have a, a really um, exciting speaker, uh, which I'll introduce in a moment. My background, my name is Carl Talese. I'm an advisor and consultant for a portfolio of global firms, uh, focusing on building the digital economy and driving innovation. Um, in past lives in the corporate world, I've also held uh, leadership positions with the likes of Visa, uh, on the fintech strategic partnership uh, and venture front, uh, and I've also held leadership positions with the likes of Microsoft, Cisco, uh, and Vodafone. But um, to sort of lead us into this dialogue, um, I want to also go through the background um, of our industry leading speaker. Uh, his name is Frank Gessner. He's the chairman and CEO of, of Inval Group. Uh, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, uh, obviously, a, um, a background check on, on Frank and his vast experience both in the entrepreneurial space, but more specifically in the digital asset and wealth creation space. Frank, welcome to the uh, to the dialogue. Uh, thanks for having me. Looking really forward. It's a privilege to, to be here. Now it's a privilege to, to have you on board. Um, just for, for a, a very quick uh, logistical explanation on what we're going to go through today, um, we're, I'm going to cover off initially with a five-minute synopsis on the market landscape. Uh, then we're going to have a dialogue, Frank and I, a general dialogue on all areas around digital asset and wealth creation and hedging uh, and what's happening in that space. Then we're going to provide the audience uh, in the last 15 minutes uh, opportunity to submit questions or, or read out the questions that are, are submitted. There is a chat window um, in this live stream. So any questions you want to pose or think of during the dialogue, please uh, submit them uh, as we go through. Uh, and we'll go through as much as we can in the last 15 minutes. Uh, so on Frank's background, I'm going to read through uh, this because it's quite detailed and it's quite exciting. Um, so first and foremost, uh, Frank, among other things, uh, in, in, in his spare time, is <laughs> um, also a venture capital um, leader. So he's uh, founder and partner of a venture capital firm called Tower Venture and Avala Capital. He is also the president of the Entrepreneurs' Organization, the Berlin chapter. Uh, Frank's background also includes successfully exiting companies, um, the likes of Delivery Hero and Intershop. Uh, just some background on Intershop. In 1993, he became the co-founder uh, and CTO of Intershop, a global leader in e-commerce software. In 2012 to 2014, Frank was a CTO uh, of, Inter of uh, Delivery Hero, um, and that is a world-leading internet um, platform for food uh, ordering and online food ordering. And if you think of the likes of um, Deliveroo, uh, they set the scene, Delivery Hero, um, for these other uh, e-commerce players to, to evolve. Uh, Frank is going to share his experiences with investing in, in Bitcoin and other assets. Um, and more importantly, to get a really good understanding of the landscape uh, and the opportunities that are there. So that's a little bit of a background on Frank. <laughs> and I hope I did a good job for you there, mate. Thank you. Man. Um, so so I'm going to really kick in straight into the dialogue, uh, Frank. And, and, and the first question probably on most people's minds is, where is crypto at today uh, in terms of the market? Uh, where is it heading? Should we expect more volatility? Is this the right time to, to get involved? What, what's happening in this space? Yeah, definitely, definitely we will, we will see ongoing volatility in this market. It's a relatively young asset class. Um, the kind of the it goes up it goes down but kind of my, my advice is always don't don't look at the market every day this is rather kind of a here in certain parts the world is changing this is this is not only bitcoin it's a it's a whole new financial system that's being currently created around the globe this takes time it's mm -hmm. it's not kind of the Many people see this, oh, there's, you know, some speculative nerds put money into a Ponzi scheme called Bitcoin and, and others. No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> not. It's the next logical development of the internet that you cannot only exchange data, that you can exchange value, a global monetary network, right, for storing fiscal energy, exchanging fiscal energy, property, 
equity, stocks, money on the internet without all these central instances, kind of the, the fiscal next layer of the internet, the decentralized finance, the next the, the future of finance, this is the underlying trend. Only 1% really understood this, right? 99% see this just as, oh, kind of whatever, this is a Ponzi, whatever, or this is a, no, it's decentralized finance is the future of the way we cooperate in a global economy. And, and the governments will, be, will become part of this. The central banks will be, will, be, will be part of this. And of course, the more utilization this asset class kind of the more people the more the more it penetrates our daily life the higher the usage the higher the price and these enormous price expect the expectation come with volatility that's a kind of is a necessary precondition for the enormous price growth fantasies kind of economists uh, predict in their reports yeah i totally agree and i, I think one of the things you, you're pointing on is 99 percent of the market probably doesn't truly understand the value, not only in today, but also in terms of how do you protect or, or, or grow in this, I guess, hyperinflation, op I guess, market that's going to evolve over the next probably decade. Um, yeah. An interesting probably stat also to, to point out on this is that, you know, I guess of the global population, which is roughly getting close to 8 billion, only half of that population is currently online. And if you start to think of that half that's currently online, how many of those are currently even engaged in the digital economy and specifically around understanding digital assets and, and, and what opportunities they provide um, yeah. and how can you grow uh, your wealth within that sort of framework. Obviously, the appetite for volatility is, is a big issue. Uh, and I think everyone's got an opinion on, on, on volatility and, and sort of you, you marketed it out really well there. What yeah. are your thoughts yeah. on, on, on the, I guess, uh, the protective measures of, of investing or, or I guess getting involved with the likes of a Bitcoin or Ethereum, or what is that right mix that um, that retail investors, but also corporate um, uh, players should think about in terms of diversifying and getting involved? Right. Kind of um, first, kind of a closer look on, on volatility. The enormous volatility the the digital assets see every single day with 40% up, 40% down, right? Kind of on a single day sometimes. That's not something inherent to digital assets. It's only the fact that trading or kind of the markets are in an early stage, trading volume is still low, larger kind of some news or kind of larger transactions really moved the market. It was the same as with gold in the 60s, 70s, when gold got first listed on exchanges, but was not regulated yet, the trading of gold. We had the same high volatility as we currently see with digital assets. So kind of it's, it's something logical. And if this would not be as volatile, kind of the belief in this high prices all expect in a couple of years would be much lower kind of just as a as a as, as a closing remark on this so i see this as something positive right but do not look at the market every day kind of this is my advice um but 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 anyway kind of going forward why should someone this was your question why should someone get engaged and how should i get engaged in this asset class right i strongly believe this is kind of digital assets around Bitcoin and co are the investment opportunity of our decade of this of this decade, right? As tech stocks was kind of in the last decade, this decade kind of the potential for 10x, 50x, 100x kind of for enormous growth is in is in digital assets. But yeah. better to know what you do, right? Um, what I what I can kind of currently see is there is that the risk in the global financial systems due to corona due to kind of the fiscal policies of the of the central banks due to kind of zero interest rates in most of the countries with no way to get out especially in europe right really really difficult situations kind of the risks tech that the tech stock market is is kind of exploding in prices so kind of the risks in all these assets classes are quite they're getting rather higher than lower year by year, right? And mm -hmm. no one really knows is this, you know, when is the next crash coming? Is it is it is it getting hard? Is it just kind of a low correction? Will it continue afterwards? No one really knows. And I and I don't know, right? Kind of I also do not have a clause for all. 
but from you a, have a crystal, I thought you might have had a crystal ball sitting there. <laughs> I, I wish I would, right? Um, but also for my own wealth or for the wealth of my companies, for the treasury of my companies, where there is liquidity, yeah. right? Kind of good to protect it, good to be diversified in the market, kind of to, to make usage of that digital asset have not only outperformed all other asset classes over the last five, six years, they do not correlate with them. So there is a super low correlation. So it's kind of the likelihood if the stock market crashes, if the real estate market crashes, if even the money system becomes into trouble, that digital assets behave differently and even appreciate from such uh, from such uncertainties is quite high. So kind of from a from a classical diversification or a hedging perspective, every kind of wealth manager or economist says, you know what, add some some digital assets to a portfolio, right? Kind of from kind of a year ago, I would, uh, you know, I always said, go in with five to 10% of your, of your total wealth. Today, I'm a little bit more bullish since kind of for the next six months, we expect at least from Invao, um, kind of a, a next, a, a kind of a next bull run. So I would rather say above 10% or 15, around 20. It's kind of depending, let's say 10% of total wealth, 30% of your liquidity you have, kind of this is something I currently give as a, or at least kind of that was what I do or what many of my friends do. Why? Um, kind of first, it hatches your investments with kind of against certain risks in the market, as I said. Second, Kind of, we all know we have an inflation for going on for three, five years, right? Especially in assets, right? Kind of everything that are raw goods like real estate, gold, stocks, equity, like whatever kind of you, you want to go in and, you know, what are considered as assets, they have a price inflation of 10, 15% every single year for the last three, four, five years. And the likelihood that this will continue is super high since yeah. governments need stimulus packages for their country. So they will continue to print money. They will continue to, to have more liquidity in the market versus liquidity going in, in, in asset, in the asset market. So asset prices will continue to rise 10, 15% at least per year which means every liquidity I have that is considered to get invested into assets, like, you know, I want to buy a house tomorrow or want to want to kind of acquire a company or I want to whatever, purchase whatever, is losing purchase, purchasing power by 10, 15% every single year. So this is the hurdle rate. So right. kind of I, need, I need in my treasury management, in my private wealth management, I need to make sure that my liquidity meets the, the, the hurdle rate of 15%. And there, there are not that many investment opportunities where the risk return balance, right? Kind of where the risk and return is, is somehow okay, that has the potential to go there, right? And the, and the digital asset markets, which have seen a 2X every single year, right? At least um, is, is something that can bring this all through this volatility. And I think that's a that's a key point because you're looking at some of the, I guess, some of the news um, that we've been reading over the last probably six or 12 months, with the likes of MicroStrategy diversifying um, their balance sheet, right? Moving, I think, about a billion dollars worth of cash onto, yeah. um, onto Bitcoin. You've seen the same with Tesla, um, same with Square and a few others. I think yeah. it's really interesting to see you know, publicly listed organizations going down that track um, and sort of embracing it and seeing that hedge that you've just spoken about and the risk volatility around um, inflation and how do you guarantee at least some form of protection. Um, for, for the consumer, I guess, directly, um, where are they, I guess, how do they balance risk and how do they balance that against volatility based on what you just said? Uh, and I think that's that's really a a lot of people are sort of trying to weigh that up, right? We, we're seeing, you know, in certain parts of the world, asset classes such as real estate just, just, uh, I guess, more likely doubling in double-digit growth. Um, yeah. Where, where do you see, I guess, the opportunities for for 
the line kind of, out there. Yeah. Um, kind of look at the same recommendations everyone is providing for 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 stocks for share investments right so you don't want to put all your eggs in a single basket so do not put all your money only on bitcoin but have a diversified portfolio kind of as as it's not potentially kind of recommended to put all your money in whatever google or tesla kind of better better to have it a little bit more diversified ideally also kind of there is not as you cannot really invest into internet kind of there is not an internet stock there are obviously some index but uh, kind of Amazon is doing something else than Google and Facebook and uh, you know Netflix. Um, the same is with with digital assets. Bitcoin is rather has rather a gold purpose. Ethereum builds kind of a global operating system. Um, Dot makes it possible to exchange data between um, blockchains. Then there are certain coins only for the health industry. There are certain coins for micropayment. You know how to pay. Um, electronically for an article in the internet costing whatever one cent or, or two cents, right? Kind of they they solve different problems. So and and however, all of them build kind of this new blockchain based DeFi or this this new 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 world on the on on the internet. So better to have a diversified portfolio, right? And if you yeah. and then and then same with stocks. Um, if you have a long-term breathe, if you if you say, you know what, I want to get invested, and I believe in three to five years this will have significant significant value gain, um, you kind of better to just put it in, close your eyes for three years, right? Kind of if it's if it goes down by fifty percent in between, down just ignore it, right? Kind of hold it, right? I, I um, think one of the one of the things on that point is that how do you? I mean. There's a lot of activity happening with regulators in different parts of the world, and, and that risk around closing your eyes and and let it letting it sort of ride. Do you foresee? I mean, we've seen in China um, aspects around you know, I guess banning uh, trading uh, of Bitcoin and, and digital assets. Um, you've seen in India sort of considerations around doing the like, or more so, handing it over to to the banks to decide. Uh, where do you see that type of sort of risk uh, in in this instance yeah. or is there a risk there or is it just going to really become much more ingrained in terms of supporting digital assets as a, as a more mainstream class yeah um there are there are many many opinions about this in the in in, in the market um my kind of the regulatory risk that whatever governments or central banks somehow ban Digital assets was for me the main reasons to go into this market a little bit more careful and slowly and not put everything I have onto this. This was neither technical risk or that I do not believe that the solutions being built with these projects really solve significant problems and will appreciate more penetration in the, in the, in, in the industries. The only, the only concern I had is what is the government saying? For me, for the large for the larger digital assets this is globally decided this is done this is through kind of the sec the is it be the kind of all the larger um regulatory authorities said this is in decentralized assets there are many others like silver like gold like kind of there, there's also not a, not a central issuer on this they know how to deal with this and this is regulatory done china will they currently have stopped all activities but they're really looking at this market they will open up again they want to even become a leading leading kind of global player in this new financial system they have already the one being uh, issued as the central bank digital currency they are also that they just want to get control over it but they also want to have the tax they want to have their their people to, to to build wealth with it kind of this will india already said after announcing the big ban they said no 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 we we, <laughs> this, we, we want to be part of it right kind of and and so i kind of the regulatory concern with the really decentralized digital assets like Bitcoin, Ether, and so on, 
my currently concern is close to zero. Kind of, I think that's true, true. That, that there are so many statements and so on. What we will see are kind of digital currencies or digital assets not really decentralized. For example, Ripple. Ripple is a is a system that helps banks to interchange data, kind of an interbank transfer mechanism with its own coin, the Ripple coin. This is super centralized. This is one company, the Ripple Corporation, and there, of course, there are big concerns. Is this really kind of a, a decentralized asset or is this a security, right? And there are good reasons also to consider this as a security. I mean, the lawyers have to say, right? Or Tether. Tether has mm. has many coins out there. The most uh, most common one is a one-to-one to -one US dollar, a so-called stable coin. But the Tether Corporation defines the supply, right? Kind of, so you could, you could also consider this as a, kind of for these special cases, normal law applies, right? If this, if this fulfills the requirements of a security, it has to fulfill the requirements of a security, right? And if not, kind of, they get in trouble. And this is good. Regulation is good. The more, the more kind of markets are regulated, the more everyone feels safe to put money into this. And this helps all of us. Um, but the, the, my concern that central bank says, no, 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 not anymore, gone. Yeah, no, I, I think I think trust is the key, right? Um, you know, traditionally, trust is in heavily weighted in the banking sector with obviously the banks and the central bank uh, regulatory environment and arbitrage behind it. I think in this instance, we're seeing much more acceptance towards it, but more so frameworks um, to support um, I guess that trust build up uh, and that's more about transparency and I think that leads towards absolutely what you just said around decentralized finance I think that's going to be it's an evolution right, um, right. where right. do you see the evolution of decentralized finance and, and, and DeFi because obviously that's that's going to be the key uh, in yeah. this, how it evolving? yeah um, so first um, as much as this has an enormous upside potential. We all have to consider this is early stage. And I, especially kind of smaller projects should be considered as, you know, seed investment, venture capital, kind of high potential. Kind of you can have a 1000 X within a couple of weeks or months. And then we have seen this. I also, some of my investment has seen, has seen this, but there are also projects, you know, disappearing and, and, um, kind of it's early stage. However, um i think we will we will not kind of not not surprising that really good projects are likely are more likely to succeed than not so good projects right kind of it's it's like if i i, I invest for 25 27 years i invest in technology right with you know either myself privately or with my venture capital uh, place um and i always look is the problem they solve really significant is this a big problem and if yes do they solve this better than anything else right and if these two conditions and then if the team is also good kind of the the likelihood that they will succeed is super high and even if they are not succeed their successors will most likely succeed right Definitely. um and and the same is with uh in in, in digital assets right as long as cross-border payment transactions are a nightmare, take much too long, so are much too expensive. Of course, you know, digital assets play a role. You know what you said, kind of, we had eight, 8 billion people on this planet, but more than two of them are not in the banking system, right? Kind of, they cannot, they cannot receive money, right? Yeah. There are, you know, they receive money from workers in, in, in Dubai, in the US and so on. Um, but they don't have a bank account, right? This is 500 billion US dollar every year, right? Going into very couple of hundred dollar transactions as, you know, to, you know, to Bangladesh, to Africa, to wherever, right? And the average cost 
is $35 on such a transaction, right? So of course, digital assets play a role here, right? Or health healthcare, you know, how do I store all my health data I collect with my watch or with my sleep trackers and so on, right? Or in, in media, in everywhere. If the solution, if this, if this solves problems better than anything else, and many blockchain projects do this, of course they will succeed. Of course more people will use them. Right? People see, expect two trends. One is as a user, as a company, as a private individual, you will not even notice that you're currently using a blockchain or a digital asset projects, like you buy a house or a, over a portal or you whatever transfer money or whatever. You don't even know that the underlying system is blockchain based or that you currently transfer digital assets. This will be integrated in your mobile app, in your in, in, in kind of in the, in the in the websites you use on a daily basis, right? In terms of money, I do not expect that decentralized monies, kind of decentralized currencies, like you know the bitcoins or the mm -hmm. uh, whatever the ripples or whatever, will replace the centralized monies like the, the euro, the, the dollar, the uh, whatever the pesos, kind of the so-called fiat money. What we will see is coexistence of centralized and decentralized digital currencies. There will be digital both, yeah. right? And you will have your in your in your cell phone, you will have your wallet, um, and in this wallet you will have both kind of the bitcoins and the and the dollars. Um, potentially twenty kind of many many different currencies. The, the, the wallet will be smart enough to to decide, you know, what's best to use for the next. Right, and if you if you go around uh, around the corner for a coffee, you know why not paying with with dirham or with US dollar? It's 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 easy. It works, right? But if you want to transfer your money to your, you know, to your kid in Australia or wherever, kind of you know, fiat currency is not very convenient. Right, I'd rather do it for you know, do it in other in other currencies. Or if you want to do a micro payment, fiat is not very efficient. Do it in a do it with a decentralized digital currency is much more efficient. And so we will we will get used to having both systems in parallel. And this will also help both systems since they have to they have to follow the same regulations. The same yeah. payment the payment providers. It will also help the central banks to have a little bit more discipline, since there will be a competition of trust between centralized and decentralized currencies. Right, the more trust, the more usage. Right, and and so they will help each other, and it will be okay. Yeah, totally agree with you. And I think one of the things you've seen the evolution around central bank digital currencies becoming much more. Uh, a widely investigated strategy for most central banks. Um, probably 18 months ago, two years ago, it was still not really um, on the mainstream agenda, uh, but now it's becoming much more. And I, I think what you said around coexistence, that's the key. Coexistence, but also efficiency in the network. If you look at efficiency gains, ultimately consumers will gravitate towards where the efficiencies are. Uh, and in this case, um, whether it's the likes of these um, uh, cryptocurrencies which are providing efficiencies around some of these use cases, then certainly adoption will pick up. Uh, and in industries which need that, certainly in the remittance game, um, that may end up um, evolving. I think also you look at the likes of what we saw with uh, a couple of years back with the Libra Association launch and, and what they were trying to achieve. They've also adapted and moved to a, a secondary version of their white paper, which is all around having a, um, a platform which accommodates for stable coins, central bank digital currencies, and their own version of that. So I think everyone's becoming much more aware and understanding that you need to have coexistence uh, around this space. Um, you sort of answered the next question I was going to ask around uh, blockchain investments that Invow Group is going after. But maybe, uh, maybe you want to share a little bit more about Invow Group and its strategy, um, both in it's prioritization around blockchain investments, but also your your sort of um, asset management fund around digital assets, just to sort of get an understanding of that. Sure. So we are kind of, you can call us an asset manager or a digital wealth manager. So we focus only on digital assets and help investors to have a kind of a risk averse portfolio of, of digital assets. Um, 
investors come for, come to us say you know want to want to get engaged as most of the investors also do not manage their own stock portfolio right kind of where you have to read the news every every single day same as with um with digital assets um we we define the the portfolio mix the diversification every position we go in is hedged kind of we go for the traders we go long and short at the same time so classical hedging strategy so we play with the volatility of the market for us volatility is good um, so your assets are secured um, you kind of if the market goes down you're much less affected if the market goes up you go with the market um, and and this is what we do in 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 Germany, where I'm at the moment, uh, Switzerland, Liechtenstein. We have offices in Dubai, in Asia, um, for many many investors. And um, at the moment, we are proud for the last eight months the leading performance of all asset managers we know of. Uh, so kind of the software systems, the trading uh, trading strategies, obviously work well. Brilliant, brilliant. I'm. Um... I think we're, we're coming on to that sort of half an hour mark and I, I want to, there's a whole bunch of questions that are just starting to light up, <laughs> which is great. Uh, some really good ones as well. Um, so I think I want to use the, the, the remaining time now to sort of go through that. And that was a really brilliant sort of um, understanding of, of the landscape and and where those opportunities lie and where the volatility and risk assessment uh, yeah. considerations need to be in place uh, for most people. But just to run, run through some of the questions uh, that I can see here. There was a question certainly around um, uh, energy <laughs> in, in relation to digital yeah. currencies. Uh, could they have an impact on raising energy prices over five-year perspective? And um, this sort of came up, I guess, as well uh, with Elon Musk talking about um, yeah. uh, energy efficiency with with digital currencies. What's what's your view on that? Yeah, kind of there. There are two things. Um, first, um, when, 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 when people speak about energy, they speak about the so-called mining. So where new blocks get confirmed, the uh, mathematical, um, challenge needs to be, needs to be calculated. This, this consumes a lot of energy and, um, and is part of the kind of security of the network. Right, not not many projects based on mining and so-called proof of work. The majority have other mechanisms, but the, the big ones, like Bitcoin, still also Ethereum, all through they go also away from mining. But Bitcoin is considered, for example, to continue with with mining forever. Kind of, I can't see any any other trends. Right. Um, so that means first, it's super secure. Second, it consumes a lot of energy. Right. If you have a second look, what is this for energy? At the moment, it's it's around 70% renewable energy. And since China is currently going out of, of, um, of mining, uh, where kind of a lot of mining farms consume, consume fiscal energy, um, fossil energy, I expect we will see 90%, 95% of renewable energy um, in, in, in mining. So it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Second, um, renewable energy has the challenge. It's usually at a different place where it is needed. So <laughs> renewable energy, yeah. like you know, water power or wind power, or in in Germany also solar power, is usually at places and and at times where you know the energy is can't be used and right? it needs to be transported, needs to be stored, right? So therefore, it's a big challenge for renewable energy. Mining, Bitcoin mining. Is the most efficient monetization for renewable energy since you can put this mining machine wherever the renewable energy is. So there is no more kind of empowerment and boost of renewable energy than through the monetization of through the mining Bitcoin and all the others mining coins. So it's a it's a big plus for the for, for the industry and 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 which also motivates me to be in this in this you know to be a player in this asset class since it will push renewable energy it will it's the most it's the best monetization for renewable energy on this earth yeah i totally agree with you on that one and i think it goes back to energy efficiencies and, and i think a lot of us we read the headlines but then we we investigate the details and as you said i mean there's a there's a lot a massive weight towards um, streamlining that process, which means you're going to get the gains uh, out of that. In terms of, uh, there's a question around uh, 
your personal portfolio, uh, and I don't know what you can share, <laughs> what's your personal portfolio comprised of regarding digital assets and, and, and what would be those recommendations around diversified options that you're referring right. to? Um, so my personal portfolio is I'm a little bit kind of too, kind of from a portfolio perspective, I'm a little bit too high in digital assets at the moment. I'm, I'm above 50%, 55% of total wealth uh, of, my, of myself or my family. Um, not since, you know, I put so money, so much money in, it's rather I, I went in so early. Um, and, and obviously there was a, was a big price appreciation. I do not reduce it at the moment since I still believe we will see a bull market for the next couple of months. Kind of it would be too early to, to reduce position. If the bull market kind of slows down, I will reduce this position. Within this position, I have three major pockets, as I call it, kind of three major strategies. One is with around a third of my digital portfolio, I go just long, right? And I go only in so-called large cap coins, you know, which is, you know, Bitcoin in the majority, sure. Ethereum, yeah. Ethereum, BNB, which is the Binance coin, kind of these kind of dots, um, the ICP, kind of the, the, the large cap projects. Um, and I... I believe in the project, so I stay into it. And if it goes up, I enjoy. If it goes down, I just ignore it. It is a long term. It's a kind of a three year, four, five year perspective, right? Okay. With the with the majority, kind of 50, 60 percent of my digital portfolio. This is since kind of in total is quite an amount already. Also for 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 me, I really let it let it secure by. By our own team, kind of the the involved trading software secures the position, rebalances at all the time as the market is moving, um, is is using all these trading mechanisms and, and signals and 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 teams so people take care about this. This is kind of my safety net. Yeah. You know, we have yeah. seen so many events. Um, in the last in the last uh, 24 months where the market was crashing and our software always and our trading strategies always kind of even took benefit from it right yeah. With the small yeah, that's, that's, that's sort of driven through algorithmic approach right yeah, um, yeah there's, uh, there's a software system there are kind of a total of 22 signals being combined and, and analyzed and so on and with these kind of we go into market we go out of the market we go long we go short um kind of we play the volatility and security and security positions by the way independent of our opinion about the market so we do not speculate it speculate on the market we have we either have a buy signal or we yeah. don't have a buy signal right or a sell signal and yeah. this really plays off i strongly believe human beings are bad traders right <laughs> can I however i think software systems can do this much better however there is also a small portion kind of five seven eight percent i use to go into early stage, exciting DeFi projects, but this is rather, you know, like investing into a startup or investing into a, into a good team, kind of, I like the idea, I, I want to support it. Sometimes it's in wow, right? Sometimes obviously kind of it, you know, the idea or another idea was better, but a good thing on, on, on digital assets, they are liquid, right? You can sell them. Kind of, it's not like investing into a company where you usually have a lockup of five, seven, eight years. Digital assets, you can just it kind of this liquid investment, so it's it's much easier to kind of get in, and get out. Yeah, and that, that's the key, really. It's it's the ability to to immediately exit when you need to, if you need access to to liquidity, uh, and, that, and that's really the, the key marker there. Um, we're probably getting close to to the end of time, but I, I, there was a question around infrastructure challenges. Um, do you see any infrastructure challenges in, in the sort of short or medium term uh, that we need to overcome in order to make sure that this is this is widespread or, or more mainstream? Yeah, kind of everyone who is a little bit more technical and has really played with the underlying blockchain protocols, tokens, smart contracts, which are kind of small programs that are stored on the on the blockchains to trigger to trigger events or trigger transactions, for example. Everyone who has played with them directly sees, oh, oh my God, oh my God, is this early stage, right? It's So yeah. it takes time. 
right? This is we speak about to change a financial system and to change certain industries as, as much as the internet has has kind of influenced or impacted these industries, right? Kind of this is and this yeah. is not coming within a year. Also. Also, we see, you know, as we have seen with internet and with mobile, enormous growth rates. But kind of, if you if you look at a, at a, at a global impact, it, it it certainly takes time. But however, the more it solves problems, the more people want to have it, the more support and the more backup is on this. And the, the kind of it's you cannot really stop something people like. Right, kind of. If the if the first company fails, the second will pick up. Right, and and we sometimes we or also myself, I always look mm -hmm. to the world I live in, which is rather kind of the Western world, right? Kind of you know Europe, US, the Gulf region, and so on. Um, but seventy percent of the of the other countries, most of the yeah. stuff does not work, right? The currency does not work. The the notaries do not work. The banks do not work. You cannot even trust them. Kind of the they have really problems, right? And they will and and and, and the kind of digital finance or the digital assets or the digital or blockchain will help them to just bypass our current banking system, our current industry. Kind of as they as mobile help them to bypass. Kind of, you know, or the internet, kind of the, the, the traditional communication systems and so on. This we will see with kind of that the, the innovations will be mostly, mostly driven or won't will first go into the countries that solve much bigger problems as they would solve in in in, in whatever in the US or in, in, in Europe. Definitely. And, and I think that's where we're seeing it, right, in the emerging markets. Uh, so it's a huge, huge opportunity. Um, I think we're getting to the to the end now of the discussion. It's been a fascinating discussion with you, uh, Frank, as uh, as um, as always. And um, I, I think the, the take for me out of this is that um, you need to get engaged to get an understanding of, of what's um, what the opportunities are. But secondly, also is to really get a grasp of of where where the world's moving, uh, and the world is moving towards a digitalized uh, version of of an economy wherever you are. Uh, and I think. Some countries are moving faster than others, and I think um, you know, be, being for me an expat, obviously in um, in Dubai uh, and in the UAE, you, you're going to make decisions in the future, and our kids are going to make decisions based on efficiencies of economies and efficiencies of cities. And, and I think a lot of that comes back down to um, if that's made available, and I have access um, to asset classes like we've just been talking about in the digital uh, asset class mainstream and or in terms of um, uh, developing oneself, uh, I think these are decisions that will then fuel innovation and fuel solving problems in multiple markets, whether emerging or developed markets. So it's been That's fascinating and, and I really appreciate uh, taking the time and, and I hope the audience uh, um, got a lot of value out of it, which I'm sure they did. Um, and it's been a great insight and uh, thank Everyone. you everybody for joining us. Frank, Getting final words, mate, for you. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.